Hi guys, welcome to my video. Today I'll be covering a topic in general chemistry involving um, intermolecular forces. The question that was sent to me through email was um, explain how a water molecule can interact with a molecule such as carbon dioxide. What intermolecular forces involve? Uh, when I saw this, first saw this question, I immediately realized the reason they're asking this question is because water is polar and carbon dioxide is nonpolar. So how are they going to react? So I'm going to explain that. But before I do, I just want to show you the chemical reaction between water and carbon dioxide. Um, it, it forms carbon, carbonic acid, and carbonic acid is a weak acid. It's found in soda. It's found in water water, body, big bodies of water such as um, the ocean, it's found in the sea, etc. It's also found in your blood, believe it or not, and there's a buffer system work, working on that. It's somewhat complicated. So let's look at the structure and polarity. The general rule in polarity is like dissolves like. Now what that basically means is a polar molecule dissolves in a polar molecule, and a nonpolar molecule deserves and dissolves in a nonpolar molecule. Now, so a nonpolar molecule would not dissolve in a polar molecule. A good example of that would be um, water and oil. Um, you can do a simple um, experiment at home. Just mix water with oil, and you notice that they don't mix. The reason is because water is polar, and oil, which is made up of hydrocarbons, is nonpolar. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at our example, water and carbon dioxide. You can see that water is polar, there's a slight pull towards the oxygen, and carbon dioxide is nonpolar. There's an equal pull to the left and an equal pull to the right. So based on our rule, based on that general rule, like dissolves like, water would not would not mix with carbon dioxide, would not dissolve in carbon dioxide. However, there's an exception to the rule. And that's how water and carbon dioxide interact. It's based because of intermolecular forces. What that basically is, is it's a force de um, which is developed from electrostatic attraction between opposite charges. Um, the type of intermolecular force we're going to be um, concerned with is dipole-dipole forces. There are other types of intermolecular forces, but this is the one that's important to our problem. A dipole-dipole force is when a positive pole of one molecule attracts to a negative pole of another. And a special type of dipole-dipole force is hydrogen bonding. It's when hydrogen bonds with fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So based on those definitions, you can see that water has two hydrogens. Each of them have a partial positive charge. Even the oxygen in water has a, negative, a partial negative charge. In carbon dioxide, the oxygens have a partial negative charge. Each one has a partial negative charge. So, based on the definitions, remember that dipole-dipole force is when a positive charge of one molecule is attracted to a positive charge, the negative charge of another molecule. So in this case, it's the hydrogen, the positive charge, partial positive charge of hydrogen being attracted to the partial negative charge of oxygen in carbon dioxide. And that's gonna have, that's gonna, that's, hi involves hydrogen bonding and it's going to create um, carbonic acid and that pretty much answers the question. I just wanted to give you a real life example of carbonic acid. I mentioned that it's it's found in soda and if you've ever opened up a can of soda or open up a two liter bottle of soda you notice that there's a small little gas vapor as you open it and the reason and that gas vapor is carbon dioxide being released. So why is carbonic acid in soda in the first place? The main reason is carbonic acid maintains the carbonation of soda, and which in effect retains the flavor in the soda. So if you've ever had a, if you ever had a two-liter bottle of soda, if you kept it for a week, you notice in the first few days the soda is full of carbonation, it's full of flavor. Now, towards the end of the week the soda becomes flat, it's less flavorful, and a reason for that is because the carbon dioxide, um, there's less carbon dioxide at the end of the week towards the beginning of the week, because the carbon dioxide is being slowly released throughout the whole week. I just wanted to wrap it up, um, 
just want to make sure you, I answered the question properly. Explain how a water molecule can interact with a molecule such as carbon dioxide and what intermolecular force is involved. We mentioned that it's because the special type of intermolecular force, it's hydrogen bonding. It's a special type of dipole-dipole force. It's from the partial negative charge of oxygen. Let's go back real quick. The partial positive charge of um of hydrogen um, attra attracting to the partial negative charge of oxygen in um, carbon dioxide. So that's the end of that. I hope that helps. And you can always contact me if you have a question. You can email me. You can t I'm on Twitter. You can send me a message on Facebook. I'm for the most part I'm on instant messaging on AIM and Yahoo Messenger. If I'm not, you can always contact me on email, Twitter, or Facebook. And please subscribe. Thanks for listening to the video. And tell your friends to subscribe. And have a good day. Thank you.